What's up? Tell me what's going on. What's going on with the Jeep, man? Uh, the brakes. Brakes? Yeah. If I push them too hard, it's like metal on metal. Ooh. Screeching. So, uh, it'll probably be okay. Just keep driving it. Nah. No? Okay. So we're going to take a look at his brakes. Alright, so here's the deal. My young gearhead friend here. We're going to teach him a couple things. This is something that for the rest of his life he'll be able to change his own brakes, save a ton of money, and you know what? He won't have to come over to me. He'll go, hey, I can do that myself. Hey, how cool is that? All right, so we're going to get him to pull off the front wheel, and we're going to take a look at how bad the damage is and how long he's driven on this on the Jeep. Will's going to grab that chalk right there on the ground, that black chalk, and he's going to place it under the rear wheel. Because you always want to be safe. The first thing you're going to do is chalk your wheels. We're going to jack up this side, and then we're going to take off the wheel. He's going to take it off. And uh, see how bad the damage is. Right. How, how bad he's going to have to pucker up to the parts store and not AutoZone. All right, so we're going to get that jacked up. So here's the deal. Even if you don't have power tools like I do, or big jacks, you can still do this at home with not a lot of effort. Um, it just will take you a little bit longer. But we are going to use some power tools just to make it quicker. Will's going to take off the wheel. It's hotter out here than a fox cooking a biscuit on a hound's, I don't know. In the south we have all these kind of crazy sayings, but it's hot out here, I can tell you. We're going to have to hydrate with some agua. Here's the moment of truth. How bad is it? How bad is it? Not bad. Not too bad. This side isn't bad at all. Really? Got plenty of pad. That ain't good. And what side's bad? Did you hear it grinding every time you hit the brakes? Or just uh, not every time. It's just when I like if it if I like if I hit it too hard, then you hear I hear the front one start grinding. You sure it's the front? I mean, it sounded like the front. Okay. All right. So this side's okay. We're gonna put a jack stand under it and raise up the other side. All right, we got the tires back on. He's sweating like a pig. Look at that sweat rolling off that boy. Start. Yeah, look at that. Let's get a close-up of that. <laughs> look at it. It's coming off his chin. Uh, All right, so now uh, we're going to look at the rear brake since the front one seemed to be okay. And then we're going to road test it if we don't find anything with those. But my guess is maybe the back ones are jacked up. All right, it's starting to rain. So before we pull off the rear tires, I'm going to give Will a little tip when he thinks it's his front tires whether it's or it's his rear tires uh, grinding or if it's grinding. Um... Probably should have driven it first to see what's going on, but we're gonna take a look at what's happening. All right, I got the camera on the dashboard shaking around. He's got these swampy mud jumper tires on it. Anyway, if you want to know if it's your front tires, front brakes, your back, best thing to do is drive down the road and pull up your parking brake. If you can hear that, then you for sure know that his rear brakes are shot. Yeah, that sounds like the back. <laughs> it's the rear brakes. Alright, so now it's raining pretty good, but tomorrow we're going to tackle the rear brakes. And it's going to be the same for a Wrangler or a Cherokee, any of the Jeep of that year models. Uh, we're going to go through the brake procedures on how to take the rear brakes off, but that's the best way to check. Pull up your parking brake, and if you hear a bunch of grinding and weird noises, you know it's the rears. So now we know. Alright, so once we figured out it was the rear brakes, the whole enchilada, the whole equation, everything changes. Because the rear brakes are much more difficult than the front brakes to put on. Just because there's more piece parts, adjustments, things like that. But we're going to go through it. So let's see what Will's doing. Alright, so we got everything off. And uh, you can see where the adjuster is here. As your brakes get so far worn that it's into the metal, this will keep going. And then it'll get it stuck on the drum. And you can see where it's grooved on this drum. Well, the rivets basically just stick it on there where you can't get the drum off. Now, we'll take this up to O'Reilly's and have them see if they can turn it. They may say it's too far gone and have to buy new ones. Um, but we'll get the other side off and we'll see where we're at. We also have to get um, our brake parts and some brake clean. But... We're ahead of the game now that we got the drum off that was stuck. What happened with Will's brakes isn't that the actual brake shoes were worn out and it went metal to metal. What happened was a spring broke, right? 
it got down into the drum and you can see where it rolled around in here and made all kinds of noise and scarred up the drum so maybe the other side isn't as bad but this spring goes right here it goes in between here and here but that's what happened with this the brake pads aren't metal to metal um, we're still going to replace them and readjust them and everything however you can see um, there's a little bit of a lip here but not bad this is where that spring was rolling in between the brake shoes and the drum all right, so in this one we're going to see <laughs> if it comes off easier because there's no broken springs in it. And there you go. Nice. No scarring or anything. So we'll take them up there and see if they can turn them. So here's a Redneck Garage tip for you. When, you take, when you're doing rear brakes, don't take both sides off thinking, oh, I'll get everything off and then put the new ones on. No, that's stupid. Because what happens is, when you start doing the other side, you may want to use this side as a reference. You want to go, oh, where'd that spring go? Yeah, there it is. Okay, so if you leave one side on always, then you'll have a reference to go back and look at this one and go, oh, okay, that's how that spring goes on here and here, right? I can see here that this adjuster spring is completely broken. You see that the last person that did this brake job didn't do a good job of getting that brake cable over this portion so it was underneath so this this brake hasn't adjusted at all since they put on the brake shoes which is bad all right we got our brake parts here from o'reilly's and we've got brake shoes and some brake clean and i'll usually <coughs> take a pan and just kind of spray off the brakes get all that brake dust off make it a little bit easier to work on this dang thing now, because we're replacing the hardware, it really doesn't matter too much, but get the backing plate cleaned off, all that, let it run off, and we should be good to go as far as, like, taking all the old pieces off. When you do brakes, you're going to need a few specialty tools. This is like a, a combination pair of pliers. Um, this is uh, to take these springs off here, and then this is a spoon to adjust the uh, adjuster in the bottom. So we're going to, so I'll start taking these pieces off. First thing we'll take off is these two round springs and you're basically going to hold the post in the back, press in and turn. And that's what this is for. See, it's got these little grooves in it. And uh, after they've been on there a while, it's a little bit harder sometimes. All right, we got the springs off, which are kind of rusted on there, which sucks. Next thing you do is remove the adjuster for your self adjuster. And I try to just set it aside so I know which way it went in. Not that way, but this way. So I'll just set that aside and I know how it goes back in. And then we can start removing our springs. And you've got two here at the top. Your adjuster. Everything else. We're putting all new springs on so it really doesn't matter. But you can just kind of pry them off. Put them off to the side so you know which springs went where. And then your self-adjuster comes off like that. Now, I highly recommend that you spend a little bit of money, not much. I mean, these aren't very much. We've spent $34 on parts so far. But go ahead and get you a new kit for your springs and your adjusters and everything else. Uh, and then you're good to go. You should, you've got everything you need to put the brakes back together with all new hardware. Rather than trying to use this janky old stuff, uh, it's just not worth it. So now we're down to the nitty-gritty of putting it back together. So I'll get my parts out and then we'll take a look at that. Devin's here! Woohoo! Yeah. You didn't follow instructions very well. What instructions? Will, I told Will he had to have this done by the time I got back. Oh, well, Will doesn't know what he's doing, so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're down to the nitty gritty. All right, now here's your brake shoes and you're gonna notice that there's gonna be two different ones. One's got a pin here and one does not. And the ones with the pin on this side are for your adjusters. And because you set them off like they came off here, you can tell that that's where your adjuster goes, right? And that spring. So it's really important that when you take them off that you just set them down where you know which side they were on and it makes it a lot easier. And, like I said, <clears throat> if for some reason you get that mixed up, we still have the other side, passenger side, that's still all intact so we could go look at that one. If we took everything off, then we'd just be in a world of hurt trying to look at pictures or something so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start to put on some of this hardware on the new shoes and we can start reassembly all right so we went ahead and put our spring on our, our uh, 
plate here that holds the adjuster. Hook the adjuster up down on the bottom. Put this spring on and your adjuster goes in behind it. So now we're ready to put this other side on. All right, so I got everything back together on this side. You can tell your adjuster's correct and there is a left and right side for it. So make sure you get one. Um, you can see that the gear teeth are facing where, like that. That means you're correct. That when this cable's pulled up, it's gonna pull up on that and adjust the brakes, right? Now, I've only got a couple little tricks to show you about putting this back together, and then everything else is basically just match it up, put the right springs on, and you're good to go. What's up? Everybody comes over and wants to watch me work. What the heck is going on? It's too hot to work. Randy's here. Yeah. Yeah. And you're not working. I'm, yeah, I'm working. You see my hands dirty. All right, the last thing we got to do is get the drums put on. Here's our drums. You can see it looks nice and pretty thanks to O'Reilly's. Drum roll. Basically, what you want to do is take your new drum, or your drum if it's not new, and you're going to put it over, and you're going to take your adjuster, like you're adjusting your brakes out, and just go forward. And you're going to feel it kind of get tight on your drum as it goes out. So we got a ways to go. And we're getting a little bit closer still. And you'll get to the point where it feels real good and tight. It's a little too tight. So I'm going to back off my adjuster just a little bit. All right, we'll put the other side on. So he's throwing all the garbage away. Good job, Will. Thank you. Thought we'd look at the temperature. Hood of his truck, 140 degrees. So it is warm out here. I'm sweating like a prostitute in church. <laughs> but anyway, on this brake job, usually what I do at this point is hit the brakes a couple times, take the drum on and off, make sure that it's good and tight going on, and then the self-adjuster should take it over from there. Um, we're gonna throw all this junk away get you a whole brake kit we were into this brake job for a total of $35 with turning the drums shoes and the hardware kit because we didn't lose any fluid I'm not gonna bleed it and the brake feels really good but you can bleed the brakes if for some reason your cylinder leaked a little bit of fluid and this one didn't so we should be in good shape all right, so whether you got a Jeep Wrangler or a Cherokee, the rear brake drums are basically the same on that. Now, we spent about $35 on getting the drums turned, the brake kit, and the shoes. Uh, I don't know what you'd pay to shop. I would say probably $200, maybe $250. So he saved a ton of money. Uh, is it more complicated than the fronts? Absolutely it is. But if you go step by step, have the other side to watch what's going on, and learn how to use your specialty tools, then you too can do rear brakes. Got any questions or comments? Leave a comment below. I'll be happy to answer any. I'm David from the Redneck Garage with Will. Come over here, Will. He's a little sweaty monkey. Say goodbye. Goodbye. Keep turning wrenches.